Welcome to the Richesson Reverse Engineering Channel. We're going to do a little bit of a different video today. I'm out in my garage. I've been working on decoding this data and everything and staring at it for the last month. And honestly, I needed to get like away from the computer and just get out um, and do something outside. Some kind of metalworking, anything that was not staring at ones and zeros. Um, so let me show you what I figured out so far. Uh, you know, we basically this channel has been mostly about power meters and smart meters and and reverse engineering those but I'd really like to do some other stuff but the problem is I can't really move on to something until we figure out how to decode the smart meters power data we already know how to see their GPS locations and I can see the last time they've lost power or not and all this interesting stuff but we don't know the actual power readings of the power meter and that's really its only function and it's it's what I'd like to know and I think it's what you'd like to know as well so let me show you the packets that I recently found and captured. I have them over here on a, on a piece of paper. Let me move this thing. Here we go. And so you'll see basically these, uh, it's, it's kind of a lot. And so what I did was I printed it and I spread it out on this piece of paper so we could understand it. And I also showed um, this one byte that I think is, it's what made me think that maybe this data is encoded or compressed and not encrypted but I'm not sure if that's really the case or not uh, it could be that it's encrypted uh, I wrote a whole routine I, I got this stuff you'll see in the description links to the github where I put a whole decompression routine I wrote and I wrote that decompression routine and I found this data because I was looking inside of the collector and so what's the collector I did, the, I did a different video about the collector and reverse engineering it and a hard drive that I found inside of it that contained source code basically that you could decompile and see all the source and in that source here it is here you can see I have, uh, I have some car cleaning products but I also have a lot of freaking smart meters and smart meter type things and this guy right down here this is mounted on a utility pole it's called the collector um, and it, inside of it, had a hard drive, and on that hard drive, um, there was a bunch of files, and those files are written in .NET, and you can decompile them, basically, and see the full source code. I mean, all the variable names, everything. And so inside there, I was searching, and I found things about encryption and all this stuff, and I found one area where it talked about decompressing. And the decompressing part was interesting because when I would look at these binary files, I'll put one on the screen right now. Um, when I would look at these ROM dumps, there's a little memory chip inside the smart meter. And that little memory chip is where it'll store all the meter reading data before it transmits it back. And I think it keeps it in there in case something happens with the transmissions or whatever. And in there, the, you'll see the readings. There's a lot of filler kind of zeros in between these chunks of data. And so it made me think, hey, that's a case for compression. And I saw compression mentioned in the source code. And so I thought, perhaps this data, this data that's right here, perhaps this data isn't, um, isn't encrypted at all. Perhaps it's just compressed. And so let's take a look at this real quick. So I labeled some of these parts here, like I call this SOF, start of frame. And then over here is end of frame. And so they all seem to start 00FF, and then the end of frame is usually a 04. And so in the beginning, you have some kind of standard stuff. You have like destination um, addresses, you have source addresses, and this is kind of just routing information. And these four packets, I should explain why I picked these four. They're not four random packets. So the, the meter, when it sends data, it'll send kind of, you know, packets a few different times to ensure they traverse across the network. It's bouncing from one meter to the next. And so in order to ensure that it gets there, um, it'll send multiple broadcasts. So what you're seeing here is this is four packets where what I'm calling the payload in green, I'm calling it that because it's the same in every single one of these packets. The packets have kind of different labelings and they have different um, probably synchronization data um, and information like that that it's sending. But these green areas are the same in each one. And so what it allows us to do is kind of tell, well, what's different? Well, these bytes here are different. So perhaps these are some kind of um, redundancy check or a signature of some kind. 
Um, and these bikes here, these ones are kind of the same in these packets, so it might be that this is part of this packet or not. But I have seen other packets where it's different, which is why I, I did that, I think. But you got to take this with a grain of salt. Like, this isn't frickin' the Bible. It's not holy gospel here. These are just guesses. Now, the guess that kind of led me to think maybe it's compressed is this thing that says message details. So up here, inside the source code in the collector, which I can't show you um, because it would be illegal for me to share that source code, but I can show you kind of what I found. And so what I found is that there's a byte, and that byte tells you if the packet, the whole packet, contains what's called an HMAC, if it's signed, if it's compressed, which sent me down this crazy journey for the last two months, or if it's encrypted. And so it'll basically and these values together. So if you have E0, like say in this spot where it says message details, instead of 60, if it said E0, that would mean that it has the HMAC, it's signed, and it's compressed. Sorry, my automatic lights in the garage just turned off. Uh, very helpful. Um, in this case, with 60, that means 40 plus 20, that this packet is signed and compressed. So, uh, you know, this is how I thought, well, maybe this is the signature. Um, and then it could it be compressed? And so um, the way the compression routine seems to work in the source code is, is that there's a huge array of data and that array of data, the first byte tells this routine, it's called an LZSS compression. It tells it in the first byte how, like, what, what are the values, what's the kind of configuration that it will use, how was it compressed. There's something called an index count and there's a length count. And so in that first byte, the upper four bits are the index, the bottom three are the length, and I don't know what the hell they do with the the fourth, uh, the fourth bit up here. Nothing, I guess. Um, and using that, it'll decompress it. You'll see, I basically wrote this Python program, and and it's on GitHub in the in the files. That will run. It will do this. It's based off of uh, essentially exactly the code that is in the collector. Now, it's not exactly the code that's in the collector because that code is written in C sharp, and this is written in Python. So it's. It's my interpretation, after reading through it, how they did it. There's kind of two main chunks. There's an area where we keep track of all the bits essentially in that array. We cycle through and, and as the index and the length change, that changes all these parameters of how it's gonna pull data and decompress it. Um, you know, there could be an error there, I don't know. Uh, I was pretty excited because when I would run it and sometimes it would decode a packet or not, this is what I would feed in for the packet. So what I would do is in that code, I'll basically put this stuff together. So I'm assuming that a lot of this data is getting stripped off um, when it comes into the modem to receive it. Let's look at a, let's look at a modem real quick. I mean, let me, let me kind of put some pieces together for you so it, it's a little clearer here. Let's say we have a, a modem and let's grab a meter for the hell of it. Uh, and let's just put it over here. So, so we got a meter right behind our radio control fuel and we got a modem right here. So. The meter is broadcasting some data. These modems also broadcast data. Um, and they can be, actually, this modem hardware is what's inside of the collector as well that, that receives it back. So, so this data, it gets sent and broadcasted back. And so some of this stuff gets stripped off or, or whatever as it gets received. And it gets turned into the actual packet of data that we care about. I'm thinking this payload is the stuff that's kind of kept. So this other stuff gets stripped off this routing stuff. And then perhaps this, it's the same every time. So even though these four packets were four different broadcasts, these things are the, these things are the same. And you'll see this in the raw data file that is posted on GitHub. There's like a thousand different you know uh, readings that I compiled over 10 days that I put there that you can look at. And you'll see that as you're scrolling through, sometimes a lot of the big chunks of data in the middle will match. 
those are basically the same the same message it was probably broadcasted multiple times from a meter or whatever um, now to get back to this here what I would do is I would take this 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 and this I would put them together as one big uh, string of data and then I'll feed it into my grid stream decompressor Python file and there's a few ways you can feed it into that so you can feed it in just straight as one big long string of text like this essentially and it will take the first byte and it will treat that as this config byte it will try to process the rest of the data and then it will output what it thinks you know if it worked to the screen if assuming that you know the routine was able to run properly now sometimes it doesn't run like if if some stuff you know if the config byte is not what it's expecting or or doesn't work for that compression algorithm so what I did was um, I also have a function where it doesn't treat the first byte as a config byte it just runs through and it's called like a brute force method and it'll try every possible index and length um, value to see if it can find um, the, the the compressed data now now that I'm thinking about it I might I'm not sure if I try every value every length for every index but I do try a lot of values you'll see it in the source code and it dumps all that to the screen and let, and so that way we can just kind of scan and, and take a look because we don't know what the heck we're looking for at this point um, what I am looking for at this point is in that data perhaps there's a meter ID or or something else that's a unique identifier I don't think there's going to be any strings in it because it's all like containerized type data you know every every memory address is basically like oh this is the meter reading location and this is this and this is that and this is power quality or who knows whatever the heck else is in there um, but a meter ID could be in there and those are even though they're they're kind of a little different they're also fairly unique so like if you look at this meter up here this is the meter ID F0987 EA2 they all kind of start like that F0 something so you know after staring at these things forever like here's here's this one now now these type of modems usually start 8070 or something like that um, and you can see that let's see down here sometimes this destination is like a broadcast address so so that's not really a, a real meter ID it's like how it how it's broadcasting information but here's another one F03B so you'll see a lot of that um, in there now you know why why am I making this like so I feel like this is the final thing, but I've stared at this data so long that I think I think I'm probably I'm probably going to be missing something. And so what I'd like for you to do is to take a look at it as well and let me know what do you see. Like, did I miss something very basic? Is the answer staring at me in my face? Now I'll tell you. I thought this stuff was compressed and I thought this video was going to be me showing you the data like ah, aha here it is the meter readings when I started to segment this data out and then put it in Excel and I would sort the data I would sort it by the column of the payload data what I noticed is that it kind of it basically looks more random than compressed like usually compressed data you look at it and the start of it is all kind of fairly similar or stuff like that this didn't look like that this as I sort it it could start with any byte and and so it kind of was a little disheartening um, so what I thought was you guys you take a look at this data you see if you can tell anything and if anyone can if you get close if you can decode it to the point where there's some meter reading data then take a look at this stuff I'll give you your pick of anything you want from here if someone actually decodes it, if you actually decode that smart meter data, I will mail you this collector. Inside of this collector right here is the full source code for how the system receives data and sends it back. I'll mail it to you. I mean, if you figure it out, it's yours. Any of this other stuff, if people get close, you tell me what you want, you take your pick, I'll send it to you. Um, you know, I really want other people to take a look at this stuff. And I realized that getting equipment and stuff can be a bit prohibitive, and I've bought a lot of it. And honestly, after doing a bunch of analysis, I don't need all of it anymore, right? Like, I have plenty. 
Um, I went a little too crazy with buying equipment. That happens. Um, but you figure it out. I don't care where you are. I'll mail it to you. I'll pay the shipping, everything. Uh, you know, I think it would be fun for you to help out um, and to get more involved. So take a look at the data. Let me know what you think. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed, I mean, what the hell are you even doing with your life? Click the button and I'll see you in the next video. Let me know what other things we should be reverse engineering. We got to move off of smart meters, but we can't do that until we figure out this freaking power data. Thanks for watching.